the 900-day Paris-Roubaix drought finally over for what may be the best race of the last 10 years, not just 2021, from Compagna to Roubaix. 30 cobbled sectors, including mauzon pavel Arenberg, Carrefour de l'Arbre, all the iconic sections. And we had a stacked quick-step team, Mathieu van der Poel, Wout van Aert, but it was your boy... Victor Campanats trying to get in the break straight out of the neutral zone. Everyone trying to get in the break. Trent in. Edward Turns, he should have been in the Belgian team at Worlds. Max Cantor, because everyone's trying to build up a buffer before the first cobbled section, like Greg Van Aver and Martin Half, the Lotto team, because there was a big chance the break could go all the way today. And just using this photo here, they've got Jasper Philipson, Durbridge, Florian Vermeersch, Vergaard Steker Langer, Imanol Irvati, Tim de Klerk, and Davide Ballerini from De Koenig Quick Step. So rather than chase the break, they put those two guys up there. Jumbo Visma had Timo Rosen and Nathan. Nathan Van Hooydonk, there's Fred Wright for Bahrain Victorious, Max Volscheid, Luke Rowe, Yanni Moscon. These are big names to be getting in a group this big with not too many other teams having to chase except for FTJ once Kung crashed out of it. Bahrain Victorious were chasing a little bit. Kasper Asgren for De Koenig preferring to eat his sunglasses than wear them. And we could already see with 160 kilometers to go how attritional this race was going to be. Luke Rowe on Ineos was one of the first riders to start putting the pressure on in the cobbles sections, creating a four-man split with Niels Ekhoff, 2019 under-23 world champ Volscheid and Florian Vermeersch. Before Lucro had a mechanical and disappeared, Volscheid crashed out of the group and it was just Vermeersch who competed in the U23 World Champs road race the other day and Niels Ekhoff going clear, being chased by that huge break, the peloton, this is it if you can call it a peloton. The risk of being in there, just like in the women's race, was you could be brought down by someone in front of you at any moment. And indeed, Wout van Aert had those two teammates up the road who eventually would crash out or get a mechanical, and he was having to chase with Kwiatkowski on his wheel, Matthew van der Poel on Kwiatkowski's wheel, and de Koenig actually getting some numbers in the group. They had Seneschal and Asgren here in this section. They also had Stieber, Lampart, and Bert van Leeberke, but then they all just about got mechanicals, particularly their big names, Asgren and Lampard. You can see Asgren here trying to increase the pace whilst Cobrelli nearly crashed in that corner before the True de Arenberg. Greg Van Avermaet, who got in the break, not keen for that section. Vermeersch and Echov entered it first, and Vermeersch was putting Echov on a gap. You can see the fight behind to be first into that cobbled section. Wout van Aert seemed to lose that fight, and he was caught behind a Quebec rider who went down in front of him and just held Wout van Aert up a bit. He didn't crash, but now he's on the defensive. MVDP is on the front, absolutely mashing, whilst Luke Rowe, who had a mechanical, as I said, he kind of did what Lotta Kopecky did yesterday in the women's race. He just blindly pulled out in front of the charging favourites group and took down Mads Pedersen really heavily. But Juan van Aert was able to bridge back to the Colbrelli van der Poel group with Stibar in his group. But that's just another match burnt for him whilst Vermeersch is brought back by the larger breakaway group. Quick change for MVDP whilst the race chilled out a little bit. Heinrich Hauser on his wheel and then he attacks. Next section after he's changed that bike with Lampart. And Hausler in that group. Lampard's the only guy that can stay with him for a little bit before getting dropped pretty much off the wheel. Through a corner, MVDP was so fast through these corners. Going solo, one-man mission, leaving Wafen up behind to chase the break. Or actually this group up the road, which had slipped away with Siska Vickers, I think. Bova and Sonny Colbrelli. MVDP catches them on an asphalt section. So Bovan's able to get onto MVDP's wheel. I'm not sure if they would have been able to if that had been a cobbled section. MVDP seem to be strongest at this point in the race and they're chasing that whatever remnants of the larger break is because Johnny Moscon has countered out of that group which is disintegrating Jasper Phillips and the Alps and teammates there Lampart has another mechanical this time something wrong with his gears and Moscon attacks that group with like 50 k's to go he and Luke Rowe had been so strong on the cobbled sections and he built out a solid buffer on the Vermeersch and Tom van Asbroek, Israel Startup Nation rider group with MVDP chasing with another Israel rider, Bovin, behind with Colbrelli. And so Bovin, who was very strong at Wells, was able to sit in with van Asbroek 
Up the road, remember with Vermeer, Moscon had a 1 minute and 23 second lead with 38.5 k's to go. Now it changed a bit when Bovar caught Van Asbrook. He started pulling for the White Van Ark group behind. They were done. The meme attack from Jonas Ruch is all you needed to see there. And the race opened up once again with Moscon. First, having a rear flat change, lost 20 seconds. Okay, no big deal. The gap's now down to 42 seconds. But something was wrong with his, his tyres, or he just wasn't as comfortable on the cobbles with that new bike. Maybe the tyre pressure, deflate gate 2.0, was his tyre pressure too heavy? Crashes, loses another 20 seconds with MVDP hunting him down. And we knew with Moscon not going so well on the cobbles now, with Carrefour de Labra, this five-star section coming up, he would be caught and likely passed. And that's what happened. And MVDP struggled to get past him. Then Colbrelli tries to counter with Moscon in the way but MVDP is alive to the danger what an iconic image Colbrelli screaming through Carrefour de Labra attacking MVDP absolutely incredible scenes at Paris Roubaix today the first wet one in about 20 years Vermeer now in this group with Colbrelli and MVDP not trusting his sprint despite a good result I thought in a Brussels race recently attacked the group marked by Cole Brelli I don't want to hear anything about Cole Brelli not having an active race today he got up the road early when he needed to close down Vermeer there backed his sprint in the velodrome with MVDP leading it out and Vermeer tried to get in front of Cole Brelli box him in a little bit I hope MVDP boxed him in in carry the speed and we immediately saw MVDP going a long way around didn't have the speed even to get up level with Colbrelli and Colbrelli in the saddle. His biggest win of his career takes Paris Roubaix by about a bike length on Florian Vermeer. Listen to the pure emotion of Colbrelli after this six hour ordeal. <laughs> <laughs> My first Paris Roubaix, and uh, I win. I don't know. I'm very happy because uh, it's, uh, today is a uh, it's a, a legend Roubaix, you know, <laughs> with uh, uh, with the rain there and uh, weather and the start and attack a 90 case uh, to go after uh, Harenbeck uh, and nothing and uh, I, uh, and uh, I follow only Van der Poel in the final. Uh, nothing super and a super sprint and very happy for for this victory an incredible race hard to do it justice with an eight minute video but here's the final top 10 Colbrelli, Vermeer, Van der Poel round up the podium then Moscon, Lampard, Laporte, Van Aert, Van Asbroek, Bovin and Hausler for the top 10 once Sonny Colbrelli releases his power data and there's some more information we'll take a closer look at that velodrome action in full perhaps midweek this week but I hope you enjoyed the video like it down below if you did last monument coming up Lombardia I won't have footage for that I don't have our ask Yes, rights they won't respond to my emails but we will have coverage on the podcast until then ciao